are there for a specific reason <coughs> safety utility and camera so there's always at least always two safety could be one utility could be one camera diver with you or you can have up to six to each with you for a training session so three to six hours is what your your uh, day would be Here is a hyperbaric chamber and a hypobaric chamber on the welcome to the MBL sign. So if a diver or an estuarine gets the bins, they will bring them down. There's a ramp with the place them on a gurney, bring them down a ramp, and bring them down to the hyperbaric chamber. Uh, the only reason that they would utilize this is if an astronaut or a diver gets the bins. And even though they're working in just below one atmosphere here, they could still they have the ability to get in the bins if they come up too quickly. So they do have a hyperbaric chamber here. Hypobaric chamber is for altitude testing, so they have them both here on site. Still trying to find a better view. Lately, our camera views on this monitor has gotten worse. This used to be the best one where you get some really wonderful shots. It looked like uh, maybe they need to clean the camera lenses or something um, because these cameras are positioned underwater around the the perimeter of the pool. They're making me do this the hard way because they've changed them. They've changed our channels because they usually be eight, eight and nine. I used to always know. I go to one of those. You're going to get a up close view of each astronaut. Uh, but this is. Um, the umbilical is their lifeline. That's where the water, two-way communication, and the nitrox that they're breathing flows through those umbilicals to this suit. Uh, the backpack, as you can see, has holes in it as well, so it's not the real thing. But I, guess I call it the faux backpack. Uh, but it is two-scale. Everything is built two-scale, but it's simulated to the weightlessness of what it would be out in the microgravity of space. You can see the weights around their ankles, uh, those pouches, uh, have weights that are some are metal, some are chunks of foam. So they'll switch it out to create keep the neutral buoyancy as needed. Uh, they can place them around their their forearms, wherever they're needed. That's where they go in the backpack as well. So they're working on a section of the truss segment here. Now I don't know if they have audio, but two-way communication is um, by a little helmet that they wear. It's not really a helmet; it's actually a cap. They call it the Snoopy cap. It uh, looks like kind of a faded brown and white stripe type of cap. You slip into it, mics extend off to the side of your face, and you plug into the system inside the backpack unit there, and you have your two way communication. The nitrox that they're breathing here, uh, the, all of this right now today is going through that umbilical, but the nitrox is 46% uh, to uh, blend to the nitrogen. So it's a high concentrate of oxygen to nitrogen for endurance. So if you're diving, it's, it's this is actually double what a diver, probably maybe probably double what a diver would uh, actually breathe. But it gives them endurance they need to stay down for that three to six hours. So I would like to take us up and get a, a view. We're going to be up on the catwalk. We'll be looking down into the facility, so we'll come right this way. So they can actually, either y'all or row on that, but you still have to lock your feet back in place. Because these boots are made for walking. They're actually uh, fiberglass. So the molded fiberglass boots. I can imagine if you try to walk in a fiberglass boot down here. Um, so they have a slotted heel. So it's not even a full heel. It's a slotted type heel. Uh, that latches under the lip on the back of this foot restraint. So that's how it's kind of like getting into your skis and locking your boots in place on the ski. It's kind of similar to that, but they have a little bit more work that they have to do to get that heel um, that um, under that lip and lock and latch in place. But so you practice any way you're going to be working out in space. There's no up, no down out in space, but you feel it's all the bit of the blood that's rushing to your head working upside down or working on the side, weight's going you gotta feel all of that. But it gets you prepared for those different types of maneuvers that you might have to use when you go out on a spacewalk. BGT, the pistol grip tool, is their 
workhorse. So this one, you'll notice this one looks fake. It's been covered in encapsulated in plastic. They actually have a faux one that's around their hip, but this one they just happen to have had a working one encapsulated in plastic. You usually don't see them fully really encapsulated like that. Um, a lot of times you'll see just a chunk of foam look like it's stuck on the side of them or something. But they weigh <coughs> a lot, even here in the water. So the diver will hand you the working tool. If you have a fake one on your hip, you have to practice taking it off putting it back in place because that is critical to you when you're out on the spacewalks. And we can thank Black & Decker for our power uh, tools, our electric tool. NASA commissioned Black & Decker to build the tunes for space program originally. And so eventually it all came back, worked out in space well. Power tool, the electric tools, and we've got them here now. So we have our cordless tools now, thanks to them. But this one has a couple of dials on it and they dial the torque and the calibration so they dial it in. So they dial the torque in and then start the work. Even though they train and they know each calibration for every single nut and bolt that they're putting on. But they still have it to wear. It's just simple to just dial it in and then do the work. You can see the cameras here, they encapsulate the camera in a uh, shroud as well. It's probably most likely it's Kevlar to protect the camera while they're out there. You never know, all of the debris is out there. Um, some of them you can't, um, they can't detect, nor I can't detect uh, every single little tiny piece of all the debris. Uh, but a lot of they can too. Um, I think it's from the size of a dime or a quarter up to bigger pieces that you can actually visibly see. But anything of fleck of paint or whatever, it could be broken in the area. And if they, if they hit something, they're protected as much as they can. Yeah, I remember this suit is kept locked. It's about seven layers. Some of these suits are they have eleven layers to them. Kevlar is the outer layer. And they probably create the shroud that they use on the space station power plant, as well as where they put their cameras and they put them in. And uh, there's another phase of that where um, Sierra Nevada well, it's actually going to be contracted for the second phase of that. Sierra Nevada was in competition with Boeing and uh, Orbital, um, as well as uh, Boeing, SpaceX, and uh, Blue Origins. But the solid rocket boosters will be used again, uh, five stack design. The uh, Solar RS 25 engines are being brought forward, as well as um, the idea and concept of the service module. So we'll see more on a little bit later on today. And this is where I have the National Park is trained as well. Y'all have any questions? I'm doing a lot of talking. Anybody have any questions? I'll have some nice and quiet. This is amazing. Thank you. What was this built? 